Hello and welcome to another week and episode of Creating the Vision. Today's guest I am so excited for because, oh my gosh, everyone needs this person in their life. We met, I think I heard, first heard him on a podcast of another friend of mine who actually has also been a guest on this podcast, Marissa Lonick, many years ago. And then we connected on Instagram and I think I'm instantly just kind of connected, hit it off and Next thing you know, three and a half, maybe four years later, like here we are. Has but it been that long? Jeez. I think so. I think <laughs> so. Yes. So welcome, Paul. He is a personal wardrobe stylist at his company, Urbanite Suburbanite. You guys, you have to follow him, which later in the episode, he will tell you all the places that he is and ways to fo- in which to follow him and connect. But I love his mission. He believes that everyone deserves to feel great about how they look every day. No matter your lifestyle, body type, or budget, you can be happy with how you look and how you present yourself to the world on a daily basis, not just for those big, like glitzy events that you have to get ready for, or that special date night out every single day, just going to work. His philosophy is simple. He believes in personal style, not trends. Ooh, and I'm such a fan of this. This is why he speaks my clothing language. (laughs) Your work is about development, a modern, current, versatile wardrobe that helps prepare you for your day, whatever the day holds. He believes in shopping with a purpose. Oh my gosh, we will talk about this because so much of what he does aligns with creating the vision for your life and your goals because you have to do things with purpose and not buying for the sake of buying, which I feel like our culture is is, is very attuned to and does very well with all the fast fashion and trends. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yes. He believes in his clients and their specific path. A style evolution is different for everyone. And whether you need a complete overhaul or just guidance on putting outfits together, he creates a mission for your time together and works towards that mission. And I would say that he is one of the ultimate curators of a vision for how you see yourself showing up in your everyday life. So without further ado, Paul Jolt, welcome <laughs> to <laughs> Creating the you. Vision. So happy to be here. I'm so happy you are here. And I was just enjoying our conversation pre hitting the record button. And so much of what you do is is often i don't think we don't think about it in our everyday life until i think we are confronted with the that i don't know if it's a question or that just something might happen in our life and we think man i need to get it together when it comes to my closet so how do you help your clients create the vision for their wardrobe their their style their closet all of the things you do well i mean it's really about i tell people it's about clothes but it's not about clothes Because clothes are really just the tool to reach a goal, whether that goal is advancing in your career, whether that goal is being more out there socially, whether that goal is as simple as liking what you see in the mirror more. Because it's not about having, I say this all the time to people, it's not about having a great wardrobe. It's about having a great wardrobe that works for your life and makes you feel good so you can get dressed in the morning, look in the mirror and say, ooh, I look cute today. And then forget about your clothes and just have a good day. So I I definitely use clothes as a tool because I talk with my clients a lot about other things other than clothes. When someone approaches me, you know, we'll start with a consultation. My first question will always be, what has you wanting to work with a stylist? And what has you wanting to work with a stylist now? Because people will often have this in the back of their heads for years. Or, you know, I'll say people will have many, many days where you're standing in your underwear in front of your closet and you're like, I have nothing to wear or nothing that makes me feel good or I don't know what to do. So I want to know the why behind it for a lot of people because there's many different reasons why people come to a stylist. But like I said, I also want to know why they're pulling the trigger now. Because for many people, it is at some kind of, transition point in their lives. I work with a lot of people that are in transition points. And then to sort of move on to how to create the vision, the first thing I do with people, I call it style portfolio. And it really is creating the vision for our work together. I want to know how they want to look and more importantly, how they want to feel in clothes before we touch any clothes, before we even go into their closet And definitely before we shop, for me, the word I use so often is intention. And I want to do this process 
intentionally with them. And specifically because clothes are our investment, working with me is an investment. It's time, it's money, it's energy. And I want to make sure it's an incredibly productive process. So we really do a decent amount of work. Like I said, we build sort of a portfolio. And if you want, I can go through the specific steps of that. That sort of lays the foundation for our work together. I call it the guidelines and guardrails for everything we're going to do together. So one of my questions in regard to everything that you do, I, I guess, yes, I want to go through the process, but I also want to leave some room for people to reach out to you to utilize mm -hmm. your services. And I know you give away a ton of like, I mean, your stories and your, how, what do you do polls a lot? And I love answering I'll them. I love polls. responding to them. Yes. You'll do yeah. polls, everything. You'll give media, like a, I'll yes, the yes. Scenes. You'll do, do like a, a this versus this. Yes. Do you like this outfit or this outfit? Half the times I'm like, I'd wear both. Like, I just love it. <laughs> you both look amazing. Like you, I need like an all or above option, but what are your thoughts on a uniform? So like, let me explain. I started during the pandemic, like systematically just like posting things on Poshmark, selling them, donating, oh. getting rid of stuff. Because what I found was that when I was in corporate and had a, a lot larger budget for clothing, which I did, I created a budget for clothing yeah. and every quarter I would spend X amount just refurbishing my closet. Whether I did that through physically going shopping, stitch fix, whatever it was, like that was the money that I had allotted for that. So that means I built up a lot of clothing that I maybe wore one time, or I thought in the moment, that's pretty cute, but I don't really know if I like that anymore. And so during the pandemic, it, it forced me to go through and say like, I don't need all of these things. Like, especially when I left corporate and I started my own company, I can wear whatever the heck I want whenever. You know? So while, while I do still firmly believe in showing up and looking the way that you want to feel and, and that part, it didn't mean that I needed 75 shirts from, you know, Nordstrom. Yeah. I can pare that down. And so what I started doing was picking out colors that aligned with my mood, with my brand, with things that I wanted and creating more of a wardrobe. And two, two books that I read mm -hmm. really helped me start to do that. One was The Psychology of Color. And then the other one was actually Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. Okay. And she talked about how most U.S. presidents have a uniform because it is the last thing that they need to or want to think about when it comes to mental energy yep. and how taxing just deciding what to wear is on a daily basis can be on your overall like mental capacity. So most U.S. presidents, most anyone in like corporate, that's why it's so easy for men, but for women, <laughs> it's a little bit more difficult. But I started creating a, a uniform which yeah. is for me like jeans, flats, or some heels, a top and a blazer. And it's like, yep. and then I just interchange them. But what are your thoughts on that? Like, am I, am I dimming my, my style light or? No, I, I think, well, I think advise? there's multiple ways to look at that. And I'm okay. going to talk through a couple. One is I will work with people who wear actual uniforms to work, whether they're in the medical profession or whatever. Okay. Those are the people that are very challenged with how to dress outside of work because, you know, mm. most of us are at a job yeah. five days a week. I didn't think so of it that way. They haven't been forced to build a core foundation of a wardrobe that then they can expand upon in other parts of their life. So that's when I, when I work with those people specifically, it's definitely establishing a foundation before we move further because they don't have sort of the basics and basics are different for everybody, but they don't have the basics covered. Regarding the idea of a uniform like you described, I am all for it. I mean, definitely there's tons of creative people who will wear the same thing. Certain designers, you see them photographed in, I mean, Michael Kors comes to mind, black t-shirt, black blazer, black glasses, because he wants to pour all his creativity into his work. So, I mean, even I'm just thinking about like, don't ask why I'm flashing on Project One Way people. Christian Siriano is almost mm -hmm. always in like a black t shirt, skinny black pants, and a fun different jacket. That's a different version of a uniform. So, how you thought about it is exactly how I think it's successful. You're not saying I'm, it's successful for someone who wants to enjoy clothes, but wants to sort of streamline the process of getting dressed, at least on certain days when you're deciding you're going to be in your uniform. So, mm -hmm. it's not saying I'm going to be a black t-shirt, blue jeans, white sneakers person every day, all you did was you kind of just defined the silhouettes that I'm going to be in jeans and flats and a simple top and a blazer because there's so much flexibility 
within that uniform. It can be the uniform idea, but with flexibility built in it. Like you just said, top could be t-shirt, sweater, casual blouse. Mm -hmm. Blazer could be an actual structured blazer, a knit blazer, a sweater blazer, even going into things that are more like cardigans or things like that. Flats can be sneakers or a cute little point toe ballet flat or a loafer. So it's the idea of this is the number of pieces I'm putting on every day and this is how I'm putting them together, but I can have variety within that so I don't start feeling monotonous or bored or feeling like I'm copping out. It's a very good strategy for people who don't want to put a lot of effort in, but still want to have some variety and don't want people in the office looking at them and saying like, oh, she's in her Monday outfit. <laughs> like if, like I'm in my Friday outfit now. Yeah. <laughs> my camo like... sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and actually, days of the week, I'm not saying people dress certain days of the week, but that's another strategy I have, and that's more busting out of your uniform, is mm, okay. like, let's say you have your uniform like and it's summertime, mm -hmm. and you're like, I want to start wearing more dresses. I know so many people, clients, who just live in that land of, I want to wear something and I never do it. I say do something called, I call it Dress Thursdays. Just decide on Thursday, you're always wearing a dress. And then you start getting into the I habit of it. So and I think both of these things, the commonality is you can build some structure that mm -hmm. still leaves room for creativity, mm -hmm. but it takes some of the guesswork out. So you're not feeling like you're starting from zero every day that you're getting dressed. Mm -hmm. I love it because it, it it just correlates so much with the goal setting process and mm -hmm. everything that you do. I mean, you know, ha like you said, having those Thursdays, I do a Friday five where I reflect every Friday. You know, I, I pick a quote, I share it. I talk about what it means to me. It's a I use it as a journal prompt. And yep. it's just a way for me to open up and say, what was it that I did this week? Because so often we will get to the end of our week and our automatic assumption is, well, I got through the week, but I don't really know what I did. Yep. You know, I did every, I did my day to day, went through my day, but like, what did I actually do? So that's why, you know, I have the post-it note strategy. You use that every single day. And by the end of the week, you've got five things that you accomplished. You celebrate those small wins. You journal about it. You write yep. about it. You pat yourself on the back. I love the idea of, and, and you said it at the very beginning, the intention that goes into the way you work with your clients, but it's really building that intention and intentionality in them and their process so that they still have the freedom to figure out what works for them because yeah. they might want to do a, you know, I don't know, a pencil skirt Wednesday or something, but, yeah. or but or it's what works for them. A week or whatever that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that because it's that consistency piece. And then we move further away from this perfection and I have to look this, you know, a certain way every single day and be so refined or, you know, put together, you can still be put together, but do it in a way that helps serve you in other aspects of your life. Well, and one thing I, and I've talked a lot about like the intention and structure behind it. I also want to remind my clients and want to remind people, clothes are meant to be fun. Clothes are meant to be enjoyed. Clothes are meant to be a method of self-expression for anybody that wants to do it. Mm -hmm. So play, experiment. When you feel like you have a clear foundation, that's when you feel like you're prepared to push a little bit out of your comfort zone, do something a little bit different. And I have some methods I tell people to do it, but it's, again, having that strong foundation. So then you can express different sides of your personality with clothes. And I remind people like, it's just, it's just clothes. Like don't get too caught up in it. And when I'm with clients in a fitting room, I tell them like, it's just you and me and a mirror. Some people, I had a client once, just talking so much about this dress. I don't know if it's going to look good. I don't, I'm not sure where I'll wear it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, we just talked for it about the dress for twice as long as it would have taken to try it on. So why not just try it on, see how you feel in it, and then we can have that conversation. Sometimes you just got to try. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah I, I've done that with pieces before. Definitely. I've tried on or I've thought about something or I keep looking it up and then I go find it in the store. Um, and so a couple questions came up, yeah. not to like digress, but I have major squirrel moments. So it, it's just part, part of my personality. But <laughs> so one thing I was thinking about when you were talking about the dress story is I love that you said that you were in person with your client. Yeah. I hate shopping online. 
Like, what do you, what do you say to the person who I, I just, this, this is why when I was in corporate, I would make it like a quarterly trip yep. to a physical location to try on stores. I would spend all day, all weekend, multiple days. Maybe it's like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And that was my weekend. I like outlined it on the calendar, typically aligned it with our trips when we would go to New York. I had worked with a friend who worked at one of my favorite stores up there and he would pull a lot of pieces for me and we would just boom, try them on. Boom. Yeah. That's just, I can't, my, I feel like with the shape of my body, with what I know about myself, like I know what like looks good on me, but at the same time, I'm not willing to take the risk to order online. Like how do, how do I work through that? How do, how would you instruct someone? Yeah. Well, I mean, I work with clients in person and I work with clients virtually. I'm based in the Bay area. So I work with people here in the Bay area in person, work virtually with clients throughout the country. But then also I have clients that are close to me, but we also work together virtually because there's it's what I call fringe sizes. They're a size category for women, petite, plus, or tall, that isn't serviced well by in-person retail. So I might be seeing them in person, but we're still going to make selections online. I would say, I say there's a lot of intentionality behind a shopping trip. I just did air quotes. I know this is a podcast. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, um, just no but, shopping trip. Yeah. <laughs> <in quotes. laughs> but but intentionality behind online shopping as well as in-person shopping. I mean, my prep, I have notes in front of me. I shop for the last three days with three different clients and I have notes in front of me that are my recaps, but I do a lot of notes to prepare. Shopping with the list, even when you're shopping online, people, I feel like not everybody treats in-person shopping with such intentionality, but at least you're set aside, you set aside the time, you're driving somewhere, you know you're going to try on some clothes. So there is some thought behind it. People are online shopping all the time when they're just scrolling on their phone and flipping through Instagram and an ad comes up and they pop through it and then they just realize they bought something that they had no intention of buying. Decide when you're going to shop online. Create some goals with a list Hopefully you've gone through your closet, figured out what you needed, or if there's gaps missing based on your lifestyle, all that stuff. You're not just shopping for anything that's cute. You're shopping for, I need tops to wear under my blazers for cold weather because all my sweaters are too chunky and I can't layer them. I need new boots for the season because, you know, I switched from skinny jeans to straight leg jeans and my boots aren't working. Whatever it is, you're making a clear list, even if it's, I want more color and prints in my wardrobe. It might not be item driven. It might be style driven because I'm kind of bored and I see people in more color and that really inspires me. So creating that list to shop online, there is trial and error with shopping online. I do tell people, especially the clients that I do virtual shopping with, put things in your cart the same way you take them into a fitting room. People often have an idea with shopping online that it's going to work. You think you're going to order three things and you're going to love all three things and they're going to fit and you're not going to have to send the box back. The box is probably going to go back, accept that reality. And that gives you the freedom to put a couple things more in the box because you know, you're going to ship the box back. Mm -hmm. Also, I say you sometimes, especially in the beginning, if you're building a wardrobe, you're going to cast a wider net. You're going to order things knowing that a significant portion is going to go back. Because like I said, you're treating your bedroom like a fitting room. You're buying to try. You're not necessarily buying to keep. And I know there's people out there that will say this is a horrible practice because some things go into landfills. In my experience, that's only the big, big box Amazons and Targets of the world. When you're dealing with smaller retailers, the retailers that you find in malls, their stuff gets redistributed and rebought. And I know from working in stores, it goes, you put a sensor on it, you put it on a hanger and it goes right back on the floor unless something looks weird with it or it smells funny. So don't worry about that part. I just, yeah. people always say that whenever I bring that up. So yeah. realize that you're buying, like I said, overall the answer to your question, because I can have very long winded answers, is that you're buying to try knowing that some things aren't going to work and that gives you the freedom to order more. Because if, if you shifted sizes, I work with so many people, like I said, people tra in transition and a common one is shifting sizes. You don't necessarily know what size you are. And when you shift sizes, your proportions often change, especially as we get older. So what may have, might have fit you when you were that weight in the past might not fit you anymore, even though you're the exact same weight. So you do have to do some experimentation, but as long as there is a good amount of preparation behind it, 
you're not shooting in the dark. You're doing it in a very informed and deliberate manner. So I love that you touch on the sizing and the changes of sizes, mm -hmm. because that is something that as a mom, as a woman, as, as yeah. just, I will tell you, it psychologically has just like wrecked me at times when mm -hmm. I have been like, oh, I lost 10 pounds. and like, what? But I'm still this size or yeah. I'm, this doesn't fit me or, oh my gosh, I have to buy an extra large in that. I mean, I am very sizably chest. <laughs> like, you know, my chest is, is it's, it's the part of me that I'm like, oh, if I could like give these suckers away, I would just like detach them and like throw them, you know, throw, throw them out. But we always want what we, what we don't have. Right. Yeah. You know, like I've always wanted like Kate Hudson chest and I know people are like, you're crazy. You're insane. Like you have these, like, you know. I have large boobs, but so, but I hate it when it comes to clothing. I hate it when it comes because that's what makes it hard for me. And that's part of the reason I think I, that's why I will look at something online and I'm like, Ooh, I love that. But I think for me, that would just never work yep. after, after kids, after nursing, after going through, you know, like just the yo-yos, the ups and downs of life and like being, you know, one weight after giving birth and then going through kind of that yep. journey of losing weight. I have in, in my closet currently, and I think this is what frustrates me so much, is that I have shirts that I still wear extra small to extra large. I have pants that are from size four to size 10. Like yep. what? in the ever loving world is going yeah. on. And I feel like there's so many women and, and that feel this way because we, we get frustrated. That's my main trepidation, trepidation from the online shopping. Yeah. But even going into a store and trying things on, I have cried in dressing rooms because I'm like, I can't believe I no longer am a size six or eight when I yep. used to be in this brand. What is going on? Do sizes change over time or is it, I mean, or is it just like you said, our bodies physically change. So therefore things just don't fit like they used to. I have quite a few things to say about that. Okay. Yeah. First of all, sizes are arbitrary. There is no standard sizing in women's. There is men's clothes is a separate story. Men's clothes are sized by inches. Men's pants come in 30, 32, 34, 36. What is the measurement for a two or a four or a six and eight? No one knows. It's different by brand. It's different by item within the brand. So do not get caught up in, the, I know it's hard. I have mm -hmm. been there. When we, when we travel to Europe and I suddenly need to pop into an extra large and then I'm like, <laughs> yes, no, I am not buying this because I'd have to buy an extra large. Forget it. I'll just buy shoes. Shoes always. Yes. <laughs> I have done this. <laughs> oh yes. Accessory is always good. But yep. sizing is arbitrary. Try not to get caught up in the number on the tag. As one of my most popular posts is when I say, no one knows what size you're wearing unless you're wearing your clothes inside out. So realize that it's only a you thing. People will recognize when your clothes don't fit well. If you're squeezing yourself into a smaller size, not that it's about what other people see, but that is a concern for some people. Mm -hmm. If you're squeezing yourself into a smaller size, it's obvious that it doesn't fit right. It's also obvious that you're uncomfortable. It's obvious that you can't sit down comfortably for hours because your jeans are kind of cutting you in half. So remember that part when you're online shopping to combine this with the last thing we talked about, order multiple sizes. You never know how it runs. I was in with a client. Like I said, I was in shopping with clients this week. I was with someone yesterday. She's typically like an eight to a 10 or a medium. She took tops and small to large yesterday, depending on the top. And mm -hmm. she's someone who I would normally say no to a small, but, but well, in theory, you would say no to a small, but I hold the blouse up. I see it runs really roomy. I see it's running pretty wide. It's got some gathers here, which means it has room for her chest. She can easily go down to a small in that top. Other things, I have to take her up to a large. It's a sweater. It's a ribbed knit. It's going to fit her really slimly. Or it's a jacket and it's a more structured shoulder and she needs more room in the shoulders. Your body isn't one size all the way top to bottom. Like you just said, your chest makes you a different size, but your waist and your shoulders might be a smaller size. Mm -hmm. It's also when you're shopping online, start to find retailers and brands that work for you. If you're curvy, look for the jeans that are called curvy fits. If you're someone who deals with the, oh, whenever I find pants, they fit in the butt, but they always gap at the waist, A, alterations. But B, there are pants and bottoms out there for specifically curvy fits when you have a bigger, different ratio of waist to hip than other people. So 
You can start being loyal to brands again. So you don't feel like you're shooting in the dark all the time. And you're as you shop more and more, this is my go-to for this. This is my go-to for this. You might not be able to outfit yourself entirely out of one store. Sometimes stores change. Stores do change sizing. You know, there are some brands that are totally built around vanity sizing. And you're like, how am I an extra small in this? Well, it's because they people that are small can't even wear that brand because they don't size down enough. Or why am I an extra large in this? They stop at an extra large and people that are a true extra large can't wear it because their sizing is all screwy. I mean, and then there's a separate topic of designers. I had it this week from both ends, a client who is like a two to a zero and stuff wasn't fitting because it was just too big and it was the smallest size they carried. And she's like, they don't make stuff for tiny people. And I'm like, well, neither do they, they make stuff for anyone over a size 12 because that brand stops at a size 12 and I think it sucks. So yeah, and and also recognizing everybody deals with this. You can't look at someone and think, oh, they have it easy. They never have these problems. I've been doing this for 10 years. The last time I counted, I've been with over 350 clients. Wow. You might think it was silly of me to say that that person that's a zero or two has sizing issues. Mm -hmm. Everybody at some point mm -hmm. is challenged. Mm -hmm. Some people more than others. Mm -hmm. It's worth the work to figure it out so you can feel good and close. And those are just such good tips. And, and well, and really just such good advice overall that I think we as women, because I think there are assumptions made about people who are just really tiny, like, oh gosh, like they get all the sales stuff because everything's yep. always an extra small. So they can always <laughs> buy, like they can buy that top, you know, which I'm always envious. Cause I'm like, damn it. Why am I not an extra small? I could buy that shirt for only $12. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have my size medium that I need, but, but I just think it goes to show that we just never know. We never know what people are, are battling with or dealing with when it comes to, and, and that's anything in life, but yep. especially even just, it just, even just isolating it to like finding the wardrobe, finding what fits. They're going through the same types. We, we all deal with it. Every woman probably deals with this in the world of just having to try things on and see what fits yeah. and, and figuring and figuring out the brands and the sizes that work for them. And that's so similar to anything in life when it comes to creating the vision for your life. Yeah. I mean, we have to find what works for us where one person is a complete and total digital planner and does everything on their computer and their phone online. I cannot survive without a paper planner. I just mm -hmm. write everything down. So I think it's the, it's, it's the same type of approach that we have to find what works for us. I think where, where I often find people, especially with my clients and one, I think it's phenomenal. You've worked with over 300 people, you've impacted their lives, you know, over 10 years, like just giving them the power, right? You're giving them the power to create their own vision, like to, to feel empowered as well that to, yep. to find to eventually say i think i've got this paul like i, totally. can, I can take this from here and now i yeah. can go out into the world it's like you you set them on their way right well um, yeah because I, I mean i tell my clients like of course i love working with my clients for years i chopped on wednesday with a client that i've been working with for nine years i have tons of clients like from two to six years but Th that's more because they just find things easier with me. Mm -hmm. I talk a ton. I t people realize this within the first consultation. I can talk a ton about this stuff. I can just never stop talking about clothes. I love it. Like, You're so you passionate know. about it. This is oh, why I. This is why yeah. I wanted to have this conversation with well, you. I just believe a lot of people are like, are they going to learn? Are they going to get educated? I'm like, if your ears are open, you're going to learn. I explain the why behind everything I do. While I love working with my clients for a long time, I need you to know why things are working when you're standing in front of your closet in your underwear. I can only make you so many outfits, so you need to remember how, the principles behind the outfits, even some of the uniform concepts we've created, so you can understand how to do it differently. I have many clients that I've worked with for years. I have clients that we did my full framework, and then they feel like they learned so much. They are totally fine on their own. I love hearing from them. And they're like, I just want to let you know today I was shopping and you were totally in my head. And then I thought through this purchase and A, I pulled the trigger or I didn't because of this. And just, like, they just let me know that I'm still in their head years and years and years later. And that's one yes. thing I love because, you know, I feel like one of my purposes in life is to 
stop having style and clothing be an obstacle mm -hmm. and shifting it into an actual tool, like I said, to mm -hmm. get what you want, mm -hmm. even if what you want is to just be happier with what you see in the mirror. Mm -hmm. There's so much alignment with what both both of us do in mm -hmm. that regard. And yes, I love getting text messages from people to say, I just want to let you know that I accomplished my fifth goal on my vision board. And I'm like, yeah. yes, like that's what it's freaking about. That's what it's, that is what I, that's why I do this. And you know, you have that, you of course have the background in, in retail. You've done this for 10 years. Yeah. And what I love about what you just said is the why, because it's, it's easy to tell people what you do and how you do it. Yep. It's more important though, that we tell people why, why yep. we do what we do. And you truly, that's why I say you just exude that passion. That's why I've been so excited about this conversation because <laughs> you really do empower people. And that's what, that's what life is all about, right? Giving people those tools, giving them the, yep. the opportunity to kind of see, see themselves taking control of that or, Hey, realizing that, you know what? I enjoy this so much. You make my life so much easier. I just want to keep you on board because it's really fun exactly. now. Yeah. Like I tell my clients, I mean, like I said, I really treasure those long-term relationships. I tell my clients, you know, once you're my clients, you're always my client. Reach out to me with what you need and we'll figure it out. I have a very mm -hmm. structured process initially for my clients. They go through mm -hmm. four steps of my framework. I call it the restyle framework. But after that, people are like, well, how do I work with you? I'm like, how do you want to work with me? I tell them, you know, most people will do like, We'll do the whole process within one season. Then when the weather turns, like I'm telling my people that are going to start early next year, we'll be shopping springish. So then you might want to get together again in fall just to shop and to have me make you outfits and integrating those new pieces into your wardrobe. But I have clients that like are going on a trip and I'm like, let's get you ready for a trip, whether it's shopping or whether it's styling or whether it's jumping on Zoom for an hour, because I know most of their wardrobe. And I'm like, we can just talk through your trip and your priorities and we'll get you ready. So yeah, I mean, I, I treasure those relationships. I value those relationships. I am honored and grateful that people want to keep me as a partner in their life or certain people say like, I love having you on my team because mm -hmm. then when I need something, I know you're there and we'll figure it out together. I love it. Okay. I want to get tactical. Mm -hmm. If you, okay. So someone reaches out to you and they're like, Paul. Yeah. I don't have a style. I don't think I even know what my style is. I don't know what colors look good on me. I don't even know what I like, dislike. Like they're the haphazard, you know, a uh, clothing wearer. Yeah. Where do you start them? Like, how do you start building that vision for their closet? So like I said at the beginning, the first step is what I call style portfolio. And to get tactical wooden entails is I send you a ton of consultation questions. It's like 30 questions, and some of them are the surface level questions. Tell me what colors you like. Tell me what you do for work. What do you do on the weekends? And then the questions are, how do you want to feel in clothes? Tell me about a time you felt really confident in clothes, whether it's the clothing or the occasion. Conversely, tell me about when you don't feel confident in clothes. Specifically with anybody that has any thoughts, issues, challenges with their body, tell me what you want to highlight about your body because people don't think of that one. And then tell me anything that you're uncomfortable with. And then we get on a Zoom call and we talk through all that. Also part of the pre-work is creating a, I tell them it's a preliminary style mood board. And if they don't know how to do it, I direct them to an old article where I show them how to do it. Uh, making a mood board is just finding pictures of things you like. People overthink it. I'm like, just find pictures of things you like. Don't overthink it. You don't have to think why you like it. Just pin pictures. I want 30 to 50 pictures. My job is to then go through those and look for commonalities within those pictures, commonalities, patterns, and consistencies. Then during that Zoom call that we go through all their, they, we go through all the answers to the questions because I always have more probing answers. I'm looking for consistencies within their answers. I have some people that are really good at writing nice, rich answers. I have some people that are not as good and I end up pulling a lot more out of them during that call. I reflect back to them what I saw on the mood board. Some people aren't comfortable with Pinterest, so I know it's not the best accurate, best representation, and that's how I do Pinterest, and that's, I have to talk them through some more. Some people, I can tell they did all their homework within the last week before it was due, and I can tell when someone's done their homework within the last week before it was due. So I always advise them, I book several months out, so I always advise them to start doing this board organically over months, because that's when you see true consistencies in the kinds of things you're liking, 
Whereas when you do it very quickly, you honestly or often end up selecting exactly the same kind of outfits over and over and over, especially if you're not used to Pinterest, Pinterest can drive you down a rabbit hole. But anyway, so that's how it works. We create that. I have them do all that work to give to me. We have an hour Zoom call to talk through everything. And then I create what I call their actual style portfolio, which goes through a bunch of things. It goes through their lifestyle. I always want to ground their style and their lifestyle. Like I said, we do, I create a mood board using some of their pictures, some of my pictures. I also talk through their style and words. I don't believe anyone is one pure style. I believe people are a blending and layering of multiple styles. So I want to talk through that. I, I give them ideas on how to express their style and their lifestyle. I believe your style can be consistent, but you'll turn up or turn down the volume on different aspects of your style, whether you're in the office, whether you're on a girl's night, whether you're hanging out with the kids, whether you're on vacation. So we talk through all of that. I create a custom list of wardrobe essentials, things that I feel like they need in their wardrobe based on their specific personal style. And that's not a shopping list for some people. It's delving into the closet to make sure or to see what they already have before we go shopping. And like I said, all of this is done before we even talk about what they own or go shopping, because I want to know how they want to look and feel and not get stuck in what they own or what they can or can't find when they go to a store. The mood board, the lists, like everything you're saying, I'm thinking, this is so fantastic. <laughs> like, <laughs> I honestly, I mean, I've developed this over time. Yeah. I Years ago, I didn't necessarily do the style portfolio. Pre-pandemic, my business was 99.9% .9 in person. And my only virtual clients were people that I had to work with in person and moved away. During the pandemic, I was only working virtually for about 16 or 18 months. Wow. I realized the need to delve deeper and more deliberately into someone's style, where in person, I was usually just gleaning this stuff during conversations. Mm, okay. I needed to make that process much more intentional. So even though I've been doing this for 10 years, I only developed style portfolio as the first step in 2020, three years ago. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the pandemic uh, forced us, I think, to all reevaluate a yeah. lot of a I lot had to of the build ways. a completely image. different business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I I chose at the end of 2019. I said because to your point, we were moving to South Florida and where we had moved. But in, during that process, I had so many winter clothes that I'd accumulated from li living in in geographical locations that yeah. were more prone to cold weather and snow and all of the things. And then we're moving to sunny South Florida. And I'm like, wait, I don't need like 17 sweaters, <laughs> like chunky sweaters at that. Yeah. And then I have another like set of like 20 sweaters that are just like to go under the blazer. So that definitely resonated with you said that I was like, yep, <laughs> I've been there, <laughs> done that. Tried to put that blazer over the like chunky, yeah. like cowl neck sweater. I'm like, it doesn't work. Not a good look. But I got rid of so much and really assessed. And so I think that's why during the pandemic, I actually, the 2020, who knew that that was coming? But I was yep. like, you know what? I'm going to take a year off from shopping. I'm not going to buy mm -hmm. anything this year because I simply need to assess and reassess what it is I have in my closet. I had just come off a pretty like big shopping trip that fall to kind of get some stuff for, oh, I'm doing the air quotes now too, South Florida weather. <laughs> So um, for South Florida weather, because we're moving to this new climate that I'm, you know, I'm like linen. I'm like, I don't wear linen <laughs> and just needing to kind of incorporate some of that stuff into my wardrobe. So I spent 2020 doing that and I did a no shopping challenge. And actually that was probably one of the most amazing experiences that I've ever done because it really taught me to think differently. And listen, I love to shop. Anyone who has been shopping with me knows I love to shop, but I also love doing things with purpose and with intention in my life. So like, I want to know why I'm shopping. And I think what I found was that my quarterly shopping trips had just become like more tradition and more just like check the box than truly understanding why I was, I was taking them or why I was going and spending the weekend yep. you know, at the mall. So I did some of the lists that you talked about, you know, I, I had just, kind of defined, like, what do I really need? And what I actually found was that in all of my closet, in all of the hundreds of pieces of clothing that I owned, I did not have a white button down. And I'm like, 
how can I not have a white button down? And that's, and then I realized why, oh, because I can never find one that fits my shoulders. That also fits my chest. That also hard fits for curvy figures. so hard for curvy figures. And it's the worst. And so I was like, you know what, but I'm going to put that on the list because I, I it almost became, that became a goal of mine <laughs> with when it came to my closet, because it's like, I'm going to conquer this. I'm going to find the one white shirt that works <laughs> for me. And that literally makes me look good. And that I really love. So I was able to accomplish that, but I did well, it I after. That brings up a really I was trying to talk, but I think that brings up a really important point though. When people are challenged with their wardrobe, they think shopping is the goal. Like they think immediately go shopping. And what example of what you did, forcing yourself to sit with what you have can often yield better results. I say this all the time. How do you know what you need until you know what you have? Mm -hmm. and people will and people you'll repeat you'll accidentally repeat by or like you said you'll go shopping more out of habit and less out of necessity or i will sometimes have clients who i recognize are a bit of shopaholics or sometimes i will accidentally i'm not saying i create a shopaholic but i show <laughs> them how to shop better for themselves mm -hmm. and sometimes that opens the floodgates for some people and i will tell them please don't shop between appointments I need you to wear the clothes that I just bought with you. You need to give yourself feedback on these clothes. You know, just because you thought that top was cute, don't go buy it in three more colors. Wear it, wash it, see how it works. Because I realize, and I some clients, some clients we're just doing the clothes. Some clients we realize that it's we're gonna have some deeper conversations. And I just tell them very nicely, I think shopping is filling a need for you that isn't about getting clothes. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to think about that the next time you want to go shopping. That's where that clinical psychology master's degree Oh yeah, that's Yes, yes, exactly. yes I, love yeah, it. Just, I love it, I love it. When you're, like you said, you started doing those trips because you just got in the habit of those trips and you weren't really heavily evaluating if you needed more stuff. And then you ended up with such a big quantity of clothes mm -hmm. because it's not like you were shopping because stuff wasn't working anymore. You just got used to it. Mm -hmm. People get used to even the online shopping on their phone. You get, I mean, down to walking into Target and you're going there for other stuff, but you find yourself in the clothing aisle and suddenly five things landed in your cart and you don't even know how it happened. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And and I will actually, I will tell on myself because there is a particular dress that I bought in New York and then I happened to be in New York like two months later. But the first trip was was like booked into it. Mm -hmm. Well, the next month I'm like, Ooh, I really like this dress and I love this color. I get home and I realize I've just purchased the same dress in two colors yep. and I still had the tags on the first one that I had bought like two months prior. And I'm like, Oh my God, how did I just do that? Like that just makes me feel, I'm like, well, at least I clearly like the style. I'm gonna but say now you really solidified that it was a good choice so much right. that you made the exact same choice twice. Right. But yeah. To that point, I mean, then it, then it made me wake up and be like, all right, Marie, well, now you have to wear these dresses. So take the daggone tags off of them and start wearing them. And so that's why I say this, the, the whole challenge was great for me. I think there were people who were shocked, like, oh my gosh, I couldn't do it. I'm like, you know what? I didn't think I could either because I think that to your point, shopping filled a, a need for me, or I think maybe it started to fill a need for me that I didn't realize wasn't actually rooted in necessity and more yeah. out of like that comfort and the comfortability mm -hmm. that therapy that, and like the, almost the therapy of shopping brought me, yeah. you know, like going through, trying things on, Ooh, this looks good. This looks good. But what I realized is I've got a lot of really beautiful things in my closet. I invested a lot of time and money cool. in, in building that out. So getting rid of things was very, therapeutic and and just also a necessity because I think the more that I start trying to live a more minimal, minimalistic life in just all aspects of my world, it was something that I, I just, I needed to do almost to kind of cleanse my, my soul. Well, and so many, I mean, the general statistic is people only wear 20 to 25% of what's in their wardrobe. And that's what so I was going to ask you next. There's yeah. like 75% of your closet that's generally going unworn, seasonality aside, of course. Mm -hmm. And, and even with the pandemic, that might be more because so many people's lives have shifted and they're not wearing things they used to wear. So it's really being deliberate about what's lurking in the depths of your closet. It's being aware of what you're wearing and not wearing. It's not just constantly grabbing things from that first foot on the hang bar and ignoring the other seven feet in your closet. Like 
take the time and we, I mean, of course I do a closet audit with clients as part of the process. Take the time to see what's working and what isn't working. And I say, we're looking for what fits. We're looking for what fits your body. We're looking for what fits your current lifestyle. We're looking for what fits your current preferences. Your life evolves, your body evolves, your style evolves, which means your clothes might need to evolve with it. And I'm not saying you're constantly changing things over, but I'm saying recognize that you no longer have the need to dress up as much. It doesn't mean you let go of everything, but it means you just save your favorites. You don't need an entire other wardrobe for another life that you don't have. And then people always ask me, well, what if, what if the trend comes back in style? Well, whatever. But <laughs> I'm like, trends are, I don't even care about. Yeah. But what if like, right. I need it again? Well, that's why I'm saying keep your favorites. Keep the things that you wore a ton. Keep the things that both functioned for you and felt good and made sense because those are the ones you'll grab. You don't need entire second wardrobes for a life that you don't have anymore. Like I said, like, most times I work with people is their life has evolved, but their wardrobe hasn't caught up yet. Mm. So my, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm like, gosh, my, like what came to my head? I'm like, how long is too long to hold on to a piece of clothing? <laughs> there's, and there's no answer to that. Yeah. Okay, Cause yeah. how long is it still serving you? Yeah. And I have dresses will be that are like 10 to 12 years old in my closet, by the way, that I still yeah, wear. There'll be I have a coat that I know because I know I bought it. I know where I was working mm -hmm. when I bought it. It means it's at least 20 years old. I don't wear it very much, but when I need a cold weather dressy coat, mm -hmm. I go for it. You'll have those things that are very specific. Mm -hmm but you only need one or two things that fill those functions. You don't need a wardrobe that fills those functions. Mm. So like people, we're getting close to the holidays. I can't even believe November's freaking next week. I know, but I know. People are talking about Halloween parties this weekend. I'm like, why Halloween's, oh, oh. Halloween's next week. Wow, next Tuesday, yeah. right. As I get older, I get more fascinated by the passage of time. Yeah, so even like for yeah. the holidays, you know, you'll be dressing up more. You'll be in situations that you haven't been. Maybe you're you're only a sequence at the holidays time of year person. Those are the pieces you will have for years because it's not about wearing them once a month all year round, but it's about going for them every year over the course of years because they fill that need. You don't need a big party dress wardrobe. Maybe you just need the two to three that when something comes up, you definitely go for, they feel good, they're fun. You have everything that completes the outfit. And who freaking cares if you're showing up in Facebook memories in the same damn dress at four different parties. Thank it's you. It's about having a good time. It's not yes. about what you're wearing. Exactly. This is like, so we, I call it, I, I tell my husband now I have my ski wardrobe because, yeah. and not just actual ski attire, but I literally have the same sweaters. I wear the same sweaters every year. But yeah. what's funny is now I'm like, oh my gosh, that's that same sweater from like five years ago that I was wearing when we were in Vermont. There it is again in Deer Valley. Oh, now it's showing up in Aspen because it's yep. the same. It's the same wardrobe. And that's not, and people are like sometimes not into it. I'm like, that's not a bad thing. You're enjoying pieces that you love. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I do. I love them. And like, to your point, like, I don't need a sweater dress with fringe on the arms. I don't need five of those. I don't even yeah. need like, you know, I just, I just need one. And it's, it's a, it's kind of a statement, you know, dress this type of sweater, put it with tights, put it with, you know, uh, leggings. But to your point, like, I love it. And I love getting the use out of it, but we don't live in a cold weather climate. So I yeah. have to, that's why I take it on every, you know, cold weather trip that we go on. So. Well, that's why I've had that coat for 20 years. I've been yeah. living in California for over 20 years. I bought the coat when I didn't need it, but it's one I have. And I don't even wear it every year because I'm not someplace cold every year, but I know it's sitting there when I need it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go into how many other coats I have that I don't need because that's a separate <laughs> podcast. <laughs> that's the podcast. I just but love that you... <laughs> I just love that you're like, I have a lot of stuff that I don't need because I, yeah. I don't know, I guess like. Oh, it's, believe me. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, the old saying, the cobbler's kids don't have any shoes. I tell people, <laughs> oh, I don't take my own advice. Don't, don't expect that to happen. I use the principles, but I'm very <laughs> liberal with myself as yeah. to what I allow myself to do. Oh, that's so funny. I, I, I have said often 
that a lot of the reason why I coach and develop in the space that I do is because I need my own advice more than anything. Exactly. <laughs> so I need, I say, I need someone to come with me and do a closet audit with me because I can't do it myself. You know, <laughs> I, cause when I, when I'm doing it myself and I get stuck, I will literally say out loud the kinds of things I say to clients to remind my, to ground mm -hmm. myself in the reality of it. Cause like I get caught up on the emotional side of my own clothes and I help people work through that themselves, mm -hmm. but I can't go through stuff quickly and say, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Oh, I remember when I wore that. Oh, that was so cute years ago. I know it doesn't fit, but that was so cute so yes. many years ago. And the, I mean, but I'm but then, but then I ground myself in reality. Mm -hmm. I might keep clothes that don't fit, but they're not in my closet. They're in a box in the garage. Mm -hmm. If I keep a small selection of things that don't fit or things that don't make sense for my lifestyle might be in the closet that's here in my office, as opposed to the closet in my bedroom. I don't need dressy mm -hmm. stuff in the closet in my bedroom because we lead a very casual lifestyle. I don't need blazers down there. Mm -hmm. I know they're up here when I need them. So it's also even regarding getting back to people not wearing the majority of their wardrobe in front of yourself where you get dressed every day should be the stuff for your most common occasions. And then the stuff that you don't wear that much, that's the stuff can, that can be tucked a little bit away. But some people kind of don't organize that way. And then they're not even wearing the stuff that makes sense for them on a daily basis because they can't even see it all. Mm -hmm. So two things that I wanted to ask you off of what you just said. Well, one, I just want to make a comment. I appreciate that you said you keep things, you put them in a box because I still own the outfit that I was wearing the night my husband asked me to marry him, the mm -hmm. shoes, the top, the pants, because, you know, I thought... I don't know. Not that my daughter will wear it when she gets engaged, but like a selfie shoulder, she won't know that night. She will be prepared for it. But it was just very sentimental to me. I have yeah. a sweater that my grandmother gave me. It's just mm -hmm. a black cardigan. I needed one for a school thing. She gave it to me in like sixth grade. I wore it religiously till I was like a sophomore in high school. And then it just kind of started looking really dingy because I was washed, yeah. washed it too much. So I still have that. I saved that. I've saved like really special pairs of shoes that just mean a lot to me or for special occasions. So I appreciate that you said that because it's like, sometimes I do feel a little bit like a hoarder because I'm like, Ooh, like, should I get rid of these things? But like, they, I don't save, I listen, I get rid of a ton of stuff. We are not clutter people at all, but like, those are just special things that I think yeah. to me, because they remind me of those like joyous moments or those. They're nice no longer occasions. functioning as clothes. Right. They're functioning as memories, the same mm -hmm. way you'd keep something else. And that's totally right. Okay. Exactly. It's the same as, like yeah. a, an athlete making a shadow box of their jersey yeah. and their you know their football or game ball or whatever and putting it on their wall i just happen to keep it in a tub in my garage <laughs> yeah well, the one thing i do say to people with that is there are there other ways you could honor some of these pieces like even mm -hmm. if it's i mean it might not be specifically what you describe but like people have clothes from their mom or their grandma i'm like is it something that you could hang on the wall in your bedroom is it something that you could even take a picture of and have it sitting somewhere out rather than all this stuff just hiding? And it depends on the item. Mm -hmm. But is there another way you can honor this? Some people like, you know, a dress from your grandmother. You will never fit it. It sticks in the back of your closet. I'm like, is there an opportunity to make a pillow out of it that sits on your bed? Yes. So you get to enjoy it regularly mm -hmm. as opposed to only enjoying it when you're cleaning your closet. Mm -hmm. When my dad passed, we did that and made bears with out of his clothing and some of yep. his shirts and stuff. I yes. And I think that to your point, that is so great because I'm a huge, I, I love recycling. And that's kind of where I was going with my next question too, was just all of the trends, all of the stuff. But I am someone who I always tell people like, my notebooks and workbooks for the most part, if I have control of it, are printed on 100% recycled paper. Like mm -hmm. everything I do, it's why I love collecting magazines because I'm like, don't throw that away. I will take it. Someone will yeah. be able to create a vision out of this. <laughs> Give it to me and let me. <laughs> send them you know? all to you. Yes, send them <laughs> all to me. I will give you guys an address, not my physical <laughs> one because my husband would freak out if all these things just started showing up. But yes, save your old magazines, ship them my way or whatever, you know, <laughs> or save them for your own vision board, you know, party, but, or to create your mood board. If you find a beautiful outfit, yeah. start, you know, piecing those together. But I do firmly and strongly believe, and it's something that one of the mission and core values that I wrote as far as like my company is concerned was that I wanted to make sure that I was building this business 
because it is, and you had mentioned, I think something similar earlier about like returning and all of that, that resonated with me because I think oftentimes people think, God, that's so wasteful what you do with all these magazines. And you're just, you know, I don't never ask people to pay for buy magazines and bring them. I always provide all the materials. I have everything. I do pull a lot of my own images that we've either taken through the creative team or through Getty images, which of which I have a membership to Canva pro different things that I can pull for people. I print them on hundred percent recycled paper. Like I'm constantly thinking about how can I be more sustainable? How can I be more, I use old cardboard for my boards half the time, Mm -hmm. or I, you know, I use, I use products that are already in existence that are already items that can, that are sustainable. And that further that my own personal mission of being a little bit of an environmental nerd. And so I, I think that leads just my next question of, you know, what, and, and listen, I don't, I don't know that we have the answer to solve this, but I think what you do, because it's so intentional, hopefully mitigates and cuts down on how much like fast fashion that we have. But I think that that was probably part of the impetus of my no shopping challenge was because I just kept looking around and thinking, oh my gosh, we are just inundated with stuff. There's just so much stuff constantly. Like how do we... And listen, I'm the first person that will admit I go to Costco and I'm like, oh yeah, nine ninety nine for this shirt, and I can wear this under a blazer for my next virtual. Sign me up. I'll buy them in every color, every pattern. Like, let's go. And then I have to stop myself and I'm like, damn it, Maria. Like, think, think. Like, you know, remind yourself. Like, this is exactly what you don't want to do. This is is what you you know you're trying to fight against. But how do we kind of get in a mindset where I mean, Target comes to mind too because I'm like, oh, I love a good like. It's way too easy. That's yes, they the suck you in. You know, yeah. I go there for like coffee and a a lip balm and I walk out $450 later yep. with items I just don't need. Pajamas for the whole family so we can match. Like they didn't have pajamas. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. How do we combat this? I mean, I guess in all of your work and your experience <laughs> with clients, what do you think? Well, and that's like, I, it takes me back to the intention. It takes me back to the intention and the preparation a, like you, you just described all unintentional shopping. Mm. If pajamas weren't on the list, then why are you buying pajamas? Just because something's a good deal. Just my because husband is, is like cheering you on right now. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> just because something is on sale. Just because you saw it on someone else. Just because it looks good on someone else. None of these mean that you need to buy it. So yes, there are clients that we do a significant amount of shopping, but. I think I might have mentioned said like it's a significant amount of shopping and then they don't need to shop for a long time because we have filled the gaps in their wardrobe. It's it's the consistent consumption that people get in the habit of as opposed to the deliberate decision making and then put it, and then tucking your credit card in your wallet because you're done. So people again shop. I, I share like a ton of this stuff on Instagram. Sometimes it's fun and silly. Yeah, your page is amazing, by the way. So oh, yeah, I can't I wait for people fun. to go follow but, um, you because yes. But it's I, I have a real oh an old one that's like just because it's cute doesn't mean you need to buy it. You can think it's cute and keep walking. Yep. You don't need to keep to buy it. So it's that in, it's it's shopping on purpose. It's having that list. Like fast fashion, fast fashion as a category is challenging from a quality perspective. But you can buy fast fashion because that's what's in your budget. It's about how you treat it. You treat it in a quote unquote slow fashion way. You make a deliberate decision. You know you can wear it multiple ways. You care for it properly so it has a long life in your wardrobe. You like I I have an old article in my blog about like sustainable and slow fashion and not a single word of it is about where you shop. It's about how you select and care for your clothes. So it's that being incredibly Mm -hmm. deliberate and making I'm not saying making the decision to buy a big deal, but just making sure it is incredibly on purpose. And that you thought about it. I mean, I to calm down my shopaholic tendencies, I have consistently a wish list. It's in the notes app on my phone. When I like something, I just copy the URL and I put it there. Or I save the photo to that note. 
the fascinating thing that does is it gets some of that shopping desire out of you because you did something with it. Mm. And also it gives you a reference when you think you might need or want stuff. You kind of already have a list because you're placing wants on there that you think are cute. You're also writing down needs there when you're like, ooh, I'm getting dressed and I need a new pair of black flats. I don't have a good pair of black flats or fall is, or I need those. I just did the shopping yesterday. I need those sweaters that aren't the super chunky sweaters that I can wear under things. So common with my clients who have the really, really heavy sweaters. And I'm like, do you want to just be in the sweater up to your neck all the time? Or how about like a just nice little thin Merino pullover that you can put a jacket over. But anyway, when you recognize needs, write them on that list. When you see things you want, write them on that list. When you have the urge to shop first, go to that list. Use that list to create an intentional shopping list so you're filling gaps in your wardrobe and you're not, not to use your story, buying the exact same thing twice because you didn't even remember you had it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all about intention. And, you know, I'm not going to lie and say that I don't make those impulse purchases, but they're less impulsive because, like, I have... Two things in my head, I just talked to my husband about them this morning, that I want. They're not a need, they're a want. But now when I'm looking at other things, I'm like, no, I want those things more than I want this. So I'm not even looking at the other things. Because I'm like, if I say, like, let's say I said $500 to spend on whatever I want. Well, that jacket's $200 and that sweater's $100. And so if I, if I do buy them, because I have yet to pull the trigger... I'm buying things that for a month or so have still been in my head that I want. It's not that momentary, super cute, buy it, bring mm -hmm. it home, mm -hmm. hang it up. Then Paul shows up in your closet two years later and it's sitting there with tags and we have to have the conversation about, have you ever actually worn this? Yeah. And similarly to goals, I ask people, I tell people that they need to have a goal that they just want. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that there are, there are goals. Like we, I call it like a play goal, like a fun goal. You know, yeah. it's, it's the things that you just want. It is that pair yeah. of Ferragamo shoes that you're like, yeah. damn it. I don't need them, but I just want yeah. them. Like I just, it's, just, want it's, them. Cute, it's fun and I mm -hmm. want to do it. And yeah, something way cheaper could fill the need, but I want that. Cause again, like specifically with clothing, it's fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's meant to be enjoyed. Yes. If it wasn't meant to be enjoyed, we could all wander around in a burlap sack and we'd be covered because clothing <laughs> Initial nature was to keep us from being naked and protect us. Well, does we need Ferragamo to protect us? No. But do we like Ferragamo? Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> we do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I would also say, when you recognize those things that you really want, make sure you're not buying the quote unquote lesser version of the multiple times because... Mm. You're not letting yourself do that one. And it's to me, it's less about money and more about if you find the ideal and you feel like it fills a need and you feel like you'll get a ton of use out of it and it makes sense for your lifestyle, as budgets allow, go for it. Because I see people that would buy the five pairs of loafers yep. that equate to more than the cost of what they wanted because they didn't feel like it was worth it. They didn't feel like they were worthy or for whatever reason, they didn't want to pull the trigger. But I'm like, you just spent the same money and now you have five pairs of shoes that are worn out mm -hmm. rather than the one that you knew would have lasted. Yes. And, yeah. th and, and that is very aligned too within the goal setting space too, is the same mm -hmm. thing. It's is kind of cheapening those goals and just, yes. you know, and, and not Great putting that value on them because you're afraid that you're not worthy of achieving them. Yes. So it's like, let me just, you know, knock this down a little bit and like, well, it's okay because I at least got halfway or at least did this much. But if you had just put the time and effort into achieving the full goal, you would have surpassed where you, you know, yeah. where you thought you could be right now. And, and, and I will say that was something that was instilled in me, me by my mother and my grandmother, both. They always used to preach like quality over quantity. Yeah. So we didn't really ever grow up. And I mean, listen, I grew up not, I mean, I wouldn't say I wasn't poor. I had everything that I wanted, but like we grew up very, you know, two income family, but like very strapped yeah. for, you know, for, for, um, disposable income yeah. and You're shopping at Sears. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Sears. My mom honestly is a fantastic like consignment shopper, you know, even like Goodwill. And honestly, I am so glad that like Goodwill's become relatively trendy for great things because when we were younger, like 
I mean, at times I was a little embarrassed, but at times I'm like, but you know what? Like I'm wearing a Gucci sweatshirt that my mom found at Goodwill. So I would never be able to afford this, but guess what? I found it here or, you know, just like designer brands or name brands for things that I knew we knew quality. We just okay. couldn't afford it at that time. So yep. when I got into an opportunity and in a job and a lifestyle that I could afford those things, that became definitely more important to me than owning, you know, 15 of the same thing, you know, at the expense of the one thing that I truly wanted. Yep. I do that with handbags. So I, I mean, I can, whatever, shame me, whatever. I only buy designer handbags and I only buy one like every few years yeah. And I will carry it and carry it and carry it until actually it doesn't even fall apart. That's, that's the part, that's the point is that it doesn't, yes. even, you know, I exactly. can still carry it. And yes, am I building a little bit of that collection with the goal and purpose to pass them along to my daughter. So like, I just think that when we can align some of those intentional movements and, and, and reasons why we save for the things that we want to purchase, it also aligns us with our why, which I think you have so eloquently and beautifully continue to kind of, you know, talk to in the intentionality of why we're doing what it is we're doing. It's not about the bag as so much it is about the purpose it's serving for me of literally all of the crap that I throw in it. But then it's also going to be that heirloom or that thing that I can provide to my daughter and maybe her daughter one day, you know? So like I, those are, those are the things that I hope to impart on people. I think when I work with them, not from a clothing standpoint, but just a goal standpoint, like what are you doing that's setting yourself up for success so that you then can pay that forward? What is, you know, what is that why? And does your why feed so importantly into the intentionality around everything you're doing so that you then can go help others or you can be the example for others? And I am just obsessed with what you do. I think you are just an, a fabulous human being. I just, you light the world up <laughs> with oh, not nice. just your, your smile <laughs> and your style, but just by being you. And I, I just couldn't be more happy to, to have had you on the podcast today. And I do actually have two more questions for you. Yeah. The first one is what is your do the dang goal? Cause I ask all my guests this, what is that goal that you just need to get done? For me, it's moving out of, not moving out of one-on-one -on -one work, but my job is completely one-on-one -on -one work with clients outside of marketing the job and all that stuff. And at some point I want to move into, is it a providing a group coaching program, doing some kind of membership? I would love to provide people access to me who can't technically afford my full range of services. And also for me, looking at how can I sort of build this business because I'm maxed out as to how many people I can work with in a certain mm -hmm. period of time. My schedule is full and my schedule has been full for years and I book months out. So that's one thing that's like been hovering in my head for about a year. And I, and I can't say I'm any closer to making the decision than I was a year ago. Well, one, that's amazing. Congratulations that you were that. And I don't, here's the thing. It doesn't surprise me at all. It does not surprise oh. me at all that you were booked out for months. You are just not only fabulous in the style world and coaching and developing all that, you are a fabulous person and human. So I just, that combination is powerful. And then two, I'm just going to nudge you and say, I, I definitely see a group coaching course for you in your future for sure. I, I know. I just, I have to get over the, I don't know what Enneagram type I am, but I have to get over the always getting caught immediately into the tactical side of how this is going to get done before I let myself go into the, what I really want to do. I will let myself get stuck in the perceived obstacles of tactical. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I do a lot of work in Enneagram. So <laughs> offline, we'll talk about what I think your, your Enneagram number is. <laughs> but where can people find you? That's what I want people yeah, to know so, is where they can find you. Yeah. If you want to follow me for just like regular style advice, I am active on Instagram. I post only a couple days a week. I story six days a week. My Instagram, it's not the easiest thing to remember. It is herb suburb style. U-R-B-S-U-B-U-R-B-S-T-Y-L-E. Um, that's where you can find me to just get regular advice. 
you can go to my website, which is luckily the same thing, herbsuburbstyle.com. You can sign it for my newsletter either on my website or through my Instagram account. It comes out twice a month. I call it Style Mail. It has quite a bit more than you see from me on social media. I also share very old tips. I have been blogging for as long as I've been doing this. I've been blogging for 10 years, so there's a lot on that blog. Those are the best places to find me. I'm also on TikTok in a very small way because... I don't know why, really. All the cool kids were doing it. Same. So I'm on there. Same. Yeah. I have no so like, reason why. I have no clue why I'm on. I post on it only when I can post the exact same thing that I just posted on Instagram. <laughs> I don't even know if anybody's using threads anymore. So who knows <laughs> what the hell. I just pop so, on so, every once in a while. The answer to that is Instagram or my newsletter. And via both places, if you're interested in working together, you can click through to find out more information on how I work with clients and start the process if you're interested. Oh, I definitely encourage people to sign up for your newsletter and go follow you on Instagram because I do both and you, I love, I love the content that you put out there. So you Thank really you. do. And your stories are fantastic. They're one of my favorites to, to tune into and like really look at that because it does, it inspires me. It gives me ideas of things in my own closet that I could pick from and, you helped me to kind of rethink my own uniform that, that, yep. I, that I have yeah. ways in which I yeah, can change it. Yeah, that's one of my goals with it is just to provide inspiration for people to enjoy what you already have. Oh, like, you yeah. know, so many people have treasures in their closet and they just, people don't sit back and take the time to do what I do. Playing with outfits with what you already own, let alone writing that intentional shopping list or whatever. So if I can provide a little inspiration to do with some of that, I love that. Well, my hope is that people will do, because the I agree, the same thing around goal setting. We don't take the time. So what I would love is for people to sit down, write out their goals, and maybe one of their personal goals to be more intentional about their closet. So reach out, write that goal down, reach out to Paul, and create the vision for your closet. Oh, Paul George, thank you so much. You are fantastic. So oh, this was awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me.